It's time for Bring in the Heat with Brian Nolan. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is another edition of Bring in the Heat with Brian Nolan. Yours truly, on this week's edition of the program, we got my man, Mr. Anthony Damcott. He is going to be bringing the heat with us. Yes, as I, I, I mixed the, the title and the co-host. That's just how we do it here on Bringing the Heat. We're also going to be bringing the heat with Connor Zillich, the stud from Trackhouse, Spire, whatever you want to call him. He, he ran, he's running a plethora of different types of cars in different organizations and different series. We're going to talk all about that with him as he talked with Trenton Worsham a couple weeks ago. We'll talk about it right now. So let's go into the inferno with Mr. Connor Zillich. Now it's time for white flag is in the air. Can Connor Zillich hang on trying to win his first ARCA national series win. Gio Ruggiero just behind him. Connor Zilich, he was patient. They worked on the race car. They made it better as he makes his way around. Checkered flag in the air. Connor Zilich gets it done in Dover. To go into the inferno with Brian. And here with Connor Zilich at Hickory Motor Speedway for the Cars Tour. Uh, tough shed 250 tonight. But uh, I wanted to talk to you about your 2024 so far. You've been a busy guy for, for a 17 year old and everything. So, how would you sum up the first? three and a half months of your year so far yeah it's been uh beyond my imagination for sure winning you know some of the biggest sports car races qualifying on pole in my truck race um you know there's a lot of good things that have happened but there's still a long way to go this year and a lot of races left in front of me so i uh, just got to keep my head down keep keep focusing and not really let all the headlines and you know the, the the good stuff that people have been saying get to me right i still gotta stay true to myself and you know continue to do what needs to be done to continue to stay successful. Yeah, something I wanted to touch on, uh, speaking of headlines, is you were on DBC and y'all were kind of making jokes about social media and then your comments are context a little bit there. So um, just going from joking around about social media, then being involved in, you know, sort of like a funny little controversy, you know, like, how was that? <laughs> I mean, it's it's going to happen, right? I probably said something I shouldn't have said, but, um, you know, when, when you give the press, you know, the, the stuff that they can use to, you know, kind of get headlines and, you know, get a lot of clicks, they're going to do that. So, um, you know, it's something I just got to get used to. Nothing that, you know, anybody did wrong, but, um, you know, it was a little frustrating, but that'll happen. Yeah, something I wanted to uh, ask you about a little bit is more of your backgrounds. You know, we know, you know, sort of like the, I guess, the Cliff Notes version and stuff, but um, when did you know being overseas, you know, like, as you were originally going on the F1 path that that wasn't going to happen, you know, it, like, wh when did that click for you to maybe I should not be doing this over here? Yeah, it was a young age. I, uh, I kind of went over there knowing I wasn't going to make it to F1. You need so much money, and, um, you know, there's only 20 seats, and all those guys, you know, as, as crazy as it may sound, either have a last name or, um, you know, have a lot of money. So um, I knew from a young age it wasn't going to be really possible. Um, unfortunate because, you know, that, that stuff's really cool, but, um, you know, it's – it's how it is, and you know I'm having a lot of fun doing what I am doing. So, um, you know I've had a lot of fun learning oval racing and um, trying to figure it out. It's still you know pretty new to me, and um, you know I'm, I'm still getting used to it. But uh, it is it is a sure lot of fun. Yeah. Well, was the uh, something that I'm personally curious about is you know like when drivers come up, they have like that veteran or older person they lean on. When you were doing the karting stuff, was like Logan Sargent any of those? Uh, was he like somebody you leaned on over there? Did you interact with him because he uh, being an American driver doing doing that as well? Yeah, he was a few years ahead of me. I. Uh, we knew each other, but you know, I don't, I don't know him too well. Um, you know, there was a, a lot of guys that I kind of looked, looked up to in karting, but you know, a lot of those guys, nobody probably knows of. Um, but I mean, there's so much talent in karting. Um, you know, I, I feel like it is one of the best ways to kind of grow up racing, and um, you know, I feel like that was really good for me and, and helped shape me into the driver I am today. So coming over here uh, to do the the stock car, sports car stuff, um, being so I guess uh, I guess an outsider in a way with how, with your upbringing and stuff, you kind of had some points there with your comments and stuff you did you did make about the image and stuff. So like, what would you do? I guess it, being the races you've been at to I guess attract younger people to stock car racing. Um, I think it's just the opportunities. Um, you know, when you're growing up racing go karts, you want to race IndyCar, F1, or um, whatever it may be. But I feel like you know closed wheel racing provides the best opportunities for kids that may not have the most you know funding behind them um, family money so um, obviously it takes something to get started in racing but you know I feel like 
with the way NASCAR is, you can make it on talent still. And, you know, there's still this opportunity for those kids that, um, you know, are really, really talented. So um, you just got to make the most of what you have, though. I, I say no to I, I say yes to almost every opportunity I get. And, um, you know, it's it's tough at times. Right. You might not be driving the best stuff or, you know, whatever it may be. But um, it pays off in the end when it makes you a better race car driver. Yeah, and the last thing I have for you is, you know, sky's the limit for you. You're 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 17. You're young. Um, is is racing other divisions something you want to do? You know, we have Kyle Larson. You know, racing Indy 500 this year. We've had other NASCAR guys do that, and some come over from IndyCar. Um, is that something you you want to maybe look in? You know, you're still young. You know, you get to NASCAR. You know, do your thing and do IndyCar. Is that something else you're you're thinking about? Is doing more open wheel stuff? Yeah, I've always kind of said that. You know, guys like Kyle Larson that I look up to and. Um, you know, Tony Stewart, you know, those guys that could get in anything and, and win was, you know, someone I want to be. I don't want to be known as just a Cup Series driver or whatever it may be. Um, you know, I want to be able to, to get in any kind of vehicle in any discipline and, and be fast and, and succeed. So, um, yes, to, to answer your question 100%, if I got the chance to run anything in IndyCar or anything like that, I'd take it. And, um, you know, as long as I'm not running a full season and, and you know, whatever. But, um, you know, I do want to branch out and run multiple different series. Um, you know, that's kind of been my thing since I've you know, started racing cars is just say yes to every opportunity and drive whatever you can. And uh, what's uh, the rest of 2024? You're kind of racing a little bit of everything. What's what are you most looking forward to? Uh, I guess honing your craft more on probably the the big tracks in the Xfinity car. Um, you know, I've got Kansas and Homestead and, and Phoenix, which isn't a big track, but um, you know, those those Kansas and Homestead races are going to be big learning opportunities for me. And um, you know, I'm really excited to get there and, and kind of feel it out and just kind of try to understand it. It's um, obviously I might not have the best chance to win, but you know, I feel like I have a really good opportunity to learn, and that's the biggest thing for me at, at my age. Awesome. Connor, thank you for your time today. I'm Trent with FrontChurch.com here with Connor Zillich at Hickory Motor Speedway. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, that was Mr. Connor Zillich. Let's dive on in to what is still hot. What's still hot? It's time to upgrade you on the latest news in NASCAR. All right, we're going to bring into the program my co-host this week at Anthony Damcott coming off of a, a Dover race that was a little bit, uh, it was all right. Uh, maybe in about 30 seconds or less, Anthony, how would you describe the race we saw at Dover? Uh, one word would be arrow blocking. Um, yeah. Just a lot of, lot, of, lot of frustration on arrow blocking. Overall, it wasn't a terrible race. I think I've seen worse Dover races, but... I think overall it was a good weekend in general. Now, what came apart um, of the Dover pre-race show on Fox was Kevin Harvick announcing he is going to be taking uh, the substitute role of Kyle Larson at the North Wilkesboro All-Star event. Larson will be in Indianapolis running for uh, Errol McLaren for the Indianapolis 500, so he'll be doing qualifying there. Uh, this kind of came out of nowhere, uh, uh, Anthony. How surprised were you by this? And then um, are we actually going to see Harvick in this car, or do you think Larson's going to make it back in time? Well, sitting in the media center, minding my own business, to hear that come over the, the speakers, I was a little bit I was a little bit surprised to hear that. Uh, definitely be interesting to see Harvick with the, with the Hendrick camp, let alone in, you know, in a Hendrick car, um, I, I I have enough faith in Kyle Larson to, to say that he'll I think he'll be able to uh, do well in Indy qualifying. So I think we'll see. I feel like we'll see Harvick in the car at some point, um, but it, 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 it's it's certainly going to be weird. Most you know most standing drivers, especially those that you know are retired like Harvick is when they kind of come out of like sort of like peak out of retirement to do, you know, to do a one off or something like that, you know, for a team that they've, that they don't, you know, they're not associated with is it's always a little weird. You know, you had like, you know, Matt Kenseth, the chip Ganassi, you know, a few years ago, you know, even Jimmy Johnson coming to legacy. It was, it was a little, it was a little weird to see him, you know, to see them not associated with teams that they, you know, race with their entire careers but it it was but it's still going to be it's still going to be a sight to behold to see Harvick with the with the five team. It is going to be weird, but I'm I'm excited to see it. Hopefully, Larson gets into like the fast six or or something, um, and then we'll actually see if he actually gets to make the race, let alone the uh, the qual the practice and qualifying that 
the Saturday before the All-Star event. Let's dive on in to our soundbite of the week. Well, Tony, what angered you at the end of the race? What did you take issue with? What the hell do you think I was mad about? Dumb little s- runs us clear down to the infield. He wants to s- about everybody else, and he's the one that drives like a little s- I'm going to bust his ass. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. And short track races. It's time for the sound bites of the week. Anyone else in your car or is that at? Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, I've seen somebody else drive your car. I mean, I've never seen somebody sleep with my wife, but I imagine that'd be what it's like. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so terrible feeling. I hope Brad's sick. Well, I, I don't even know how to come back to this. I, I asked Trey if we could play this just because of how weird and awkward and odd and funny and I, I, I everything into one that comment was. Now, listen. I, I may not roll like this, but some people are into that stuff, and more power to them, I guess. I personally am not, but hey, I'm not going to judge you if you are. But boy, oh boy, that was a weird uh, uh, analogy there, Anthony. I, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it it was really weird. I mean, Brad Keselowski as a whole, I think, you know, when he was with Penske, he was this like, you know, he was very, he was... Not very liked by the NASCAR community, and then he he jumped ship to RFK, and I guess he might be a little bit more relaxed now, being team owner or something like that. But I I mean, that was even even at that that's a that's a quote that I would have never thought would have come out of any driver's mouths for a comparison, let alone let alone Brad Keselowski. So that was that was insane when I when I first heard that. Uh, yeah, uh, when I, when I first saw it, it was on, it was on X Twitter. Um, and I, I had to take a double take. I was like, excuse me. Um, and I mean, uh, Cole Custer did practice and qualify his car, uh, in Phoenix when he had to go back to the East coast and, um, uh, attend the birth of his, th- his third child, his son. Um, so, I mean, it, it's not, it's not the race, but still a little weird, but I mean, I just had to take a double take. Like what in the hell is that was it was so so weird but uh let's let's move on to some final thoughts and uh wrap it up with the jack flag it's gonna be a drag race all the way back to the start finish line no caution they're side by side right to the line big crash here they come checkered flag the checkered flag is out and it's time for the final thoughts Final thoughts are in the air, Mr. Anthony Damcott. We are short, sweet, and to the point on this, but this is a take where you can expand your vocabulary and your plethora of words on this program and uh, dive on into whatever you want to rant, rave, or anything in between, brother. Yeah, I um, for most for most of you, as you know, I'm I'm the Truck Series writer, so I'm excited to see uh, the Truck Series get back in action at Kansas. I'm excited for Kansas as a whole. Kansas is. You know, one of those mile and a half that's typically the tip, it can devolve into a barn burner really fast. You know, the mile and a half had gotten stale for a while, but Kansas was always one that for some reason it was just always a race of attrition. So Kansas is always one of my favorite tracks to go to. So I'm, I'm very excited to see not just the truck series back on track, but I'm, I'm so excited to just see how these guys will tackle Kansas because it can it can vary every single every single race they go to. Uh, for me, I'm going to be looking at one thing. That's Ford, Ford, Ford. And obviously it's been Chevy and Toyota, but I truly think that Ford could get back on the table in the wind column here at Kansas. Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, I feel like even Brad Keselowski has been getting better and better and better. I wouldn't be surprised if they're in contention. What's all said and done, though, maybe 23-11. They've had great success here. But I'm not going to be uh, shy. I think we might get an upset winner. And you know what? I think I'm going to go on a limb. Brad Keselowski is going to shock the world, shock the field, and get his first win in over a couple of years. I think he's going to get the job done in Kansas this upcoming Sunday. Ah. Anthony, uh, it, it was short, sweet, to the point. Uh, nothing like crazy outlandish that we had to talk to you about. But, I mean, sometimes we're just going to have those weeks. But uh, you, you're going to be a little bit of a busy guy the next few weeks. What are you going to be cooking up on FrenchRace.com? And then where are we going to be seeing you at the racetrack in the next few weeks? Yeah, so um, I'm Truck Series writer. So Truck and Thursdays comes out every Thursday. Um, tune in after the Truck Series races. I'll have Track and the Trucks race report. Um, as well as myself and Michael Massey, we co-write, uh, we, we split a column called Fire on Fridays, 
where I drop, um, I try to drop some hot takes. And this week, oh. um, we'll be talking about SVG and the All-Star Race. So be sure to tune into that one. That should hopefully come out uh, the way the way I want. And then, yeah, at the racetrack, um, I'll be at Ace Speedway for the Cars Tour this week um, on Friday the, the 3rd, May 3rd. Um, and then I will be, I'll be spending a week in North Wilkesboro with, uh, with our, with my fellow colleague, Chase Folsom. We'll be covering the cars tour as well as the truck race and the all-star weekend, um, from North Wilkesboro. So a lot of great things coming up for me, super excited. And then once Wilkesboro ends, it's into the summer months and man, it's going to get, it's going to get real busy for all of us. Well, that is that is the truth, my friend. Uh, unfortunately, I can't take it, bring it out to Kansas this weekend. However, uh, my boys, Mister Trey Lyle and Mister Michael Mass, he's going to be taking everything through the Sunshine State uh, or the Sunflower State. Trey, you went to school or you lived there or whatever the hell it was. What what is it called? Is it the Sunshine State, the Sunflower State? What, what is it, brother? I'm not paying attention. Okay, well, that is Trey Lyle for you. Thank you, Trey. Great producing there. Because I was on my phone. Oh, no. okay. Is it called the Sunflower State, the Sunshine State? What is Kansas called? I think it's the Sunflower State. Oh, okay, well, I was hey, I was right 50% of the time. So I got half right. Okay, thank you, Trey. That was your contribution to the program. Sunflower um, Okay, see, there you go. Uh, ironic because I live on Sunflower Lane. Okay. Anyway, enough about my address, Anthony. Um, big thanks to you as always at Anthony Damcott at Trey Lyle VT at the Brian Nolan. Big thanks to everybody that supports the program. Happy hour it was yesterday. Davy Siegel returned to the airwaves here on the Front Trades Podcast Network. Great stuff as usual. Yeah, when well, the podcast Scoot. was good. Uncalled for. I, you know what I did love. I did love that Davey was making fun of you like you made fun of me all the time when I was on the Happy Hour podcast. Here. Hey, and Lisa Nolan got a special shout out, so shout out to her. Crap, I didn't hear that part yet. I heard I heard your mom got a special shout out. I'm only like I think forty minutes. Oh god. I'm only like forty minutes in and uh I, I I've heard Buzz Williams' name be mentioned, heard Mama Lyle's name be mentioned. <laughs> to update to keep the track of things. My mom does not know who Buzz Williams is. So if you oh, know who Buzz Williams man. is, let me know at Trey Lyle VT. College basketball. That's who I will say. Or that's what oh, I, all I will say. You just gave it away. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. All you got to do is know my Twitter name and college basketball, and you basically can figure it out. Well, he could be an assistant. He could be a janitor. He's the former head coach of Virginia Tech men's basketball. If you can name what school he's at right now, then I'll that would be it. the Texas A&M Aggies. I was hoping the people. I was trying to make this interactive, but good job. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> Oh, and that man. was your college basketball fix on May the 1st, 2024 from FrontStretch.com. <laughs> For Mr. Anthony Damcott, Trey Lau, and everybody at FrontStretch, I'm Brian Nolan. Coming up next is going to be the podcast that we talk bets, bets, and bets through the gears with my man, Tino. It's going to be fun. Talk with you next week to recap Kansas. Hey everyone, Dalton Hopkins here with FrontStretch.com. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out one of the two videos next to me to see more of our racing content.